All right, so we're gonna do a video here of hopefully uh, fixing this Amana, which is a bottom freezer model. And this will be the third time, uh, I believe, the same part being replaced. So, when we bought this uh, refrigerator, it was actually replacing the first refrigerator we ever bought, which lasted 11 months, uh, which was highly disappointing that it only lasted 11 months, and when the guy came out to uh, repair it, he said, nope, you have a hole in something, and it would cost 600 to fix. He's like, it's not worth fixing. So we went and bought this. Uh, I believe we spent about 1200 bucks on this, and this is about nine years old. Uh, over here, you'll see the model number. It's ABB1922FE, the letter B, the number two. And uh, yeah, so that's the model. This is an Amana, which is also, if you look up here, it says Whirlpool, which I believe is also Maytag, and about 20 other brands. So if you're buying a refrigerator, it's like one of two manufacturers, I guess, from my understanding of it. So anyway, while we had this time of this thing not working, again, I uh, took it all apart and cleaned everything up, pulled everything out. So I'll show you what the uh, problem was. So in the freezer section here, uh, it was starting to white frost, and initially I thought that maybe the kids have had left the door open because there was some frost accumulating up here. And sometimes they forget to close the door or they uh, don't close it all the way. But it was quite clear a few days later that that was not the case because back there where your uh, coils are in there, that was all like solid ice. So it was like, um, it's not defrosting. So when it doesn't defrost, uh, the freezer still stays relatively cold. The refrigerator starts to get warm and not cool. And uh, back in here, there's like a little, there's a damper door that opens and closes to let the cold air in. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to get this popped off one-handed or not, but it was not letting any, uh, not letting any cold air, but you just pull this off and that, that pops open. All right, so I got it off. I actually broke one of the tabs off getting it out. Um, everything in here is very cheaply put together, so just know that. But anyway, this little uh, door back in here, this is what opens up and lets your cold air from the freezer section in uh, to the, uh, I think they call this the fresh fresh food compartment or whatever. But anyway, um, you'll need to take that off if you want to do some uh, diagnostics, diagnostic tests on it. So that's good to know. The other thing I just noticed, if we come back over to the tag here, uh, where did I see that? Oh, right up in here. So if we look, uh, right there, Maytag. So we have Maytag, this is a, an Amana, and it's Whirlpool. So like I said, those are just three of the major brands. There's also some like smaller off-the-wall brands that are also all under this same umbrella. And then up on top here, you'll probably notice where the light should be, and there's this connector that's randomly hanging. That is the part that uh, you'll need to pull down if you're having issues. So the first two times this had happened, uh, we took out an extended warranty on this of five years, and I believe it was something like 180 bucks. And the first time the guy came out, it was kind of doing the same thing. I don't think the freezer was froze up as bad, but the refrigerator was definitely warm and uh, they re replaced the control board. He told me it was like a $300 part. So at that point I was like, well, the extended warranty was pretty good. It was about a year and a half, maybe two years after that, control board, same type of thing, got warm. I told the guy, I think it's the control board without even like diving into it. He didn't even question it, he just replaced it. And now it's been a few years because we're out of the, the warranty. Like I said, this is nine years old. The extended warranty was only good for five years. So four years beyond that, and same type of issue again. So I kind of had that feeling. I looked up the part online, 300 bucks for that control. That, that would be an original replacement part. I said, I'm not, I don't know, this thing's nine years old. I don't know if I should do it. It seems like this is an issue. Um, so we started to shop for refrigerators. And of course, this being an older house from the late 60s, we don't have a huge opening and most of the refrigerators now are designed for like huge openings. They're French doors and they're much taller, they're much wider, they're, the depth is deeper. 
So anyway, uh, when I talked with the guy where we bought this one from, he told me, oh yeah, life of a refrigerator now is only about 10 years. I was like, well that's ridiculous. Um, he said, if you want one that lasts like 25 years, we have these models over here that are $10,000. You know, that's more of a commercial line. And I'm thinking, well, my parents had a Kelvinator refrigerator that they bought in 1973 or 74. And they had that until Harvest Gold was clearly like outdated. And after that, it went in the basement, and it, it worked forever. Like, I don't recall there ever being any issues with that, that Kelvinator refrigerator. So, a little disappointing that, like, refrigerators you, you buy now have so many issues. But if you do have an Amana Whirlpool, and I believe it's only models that have the bottom freezer, you're going to have issues with this control, uh, control board. It seems like all of those models, even doing a quick, like, YouTube search and a forum search, 99% of the times that's what the problem is. So this is what the top of the control board looks like and this is the con connector here that comes off. Um, this actually isn't the whole control control board, this is actually the light assembly and like the part that houses it. Uh, I pulled the whole thing down because the clips to get out the control panel are very difficult. So these clips here, if you can see that or not, you have to like kind of push those back and Oh yeah, if you look in this one here, you can see the last time the guy was in there with something, he was prying around. He's got it all marred up with a, looks like he must have used like a flat blade screwdriver. They're very difficult to get out, but this is the part that we're going to be replacing here. So we pop this off, this cover where it says free freezer and refrigerator, and underneath there, there's two printed circuit boards. So... Um, I ordered the part, I went with a off-the-wall aftermarket, it was only 50 bucks, and I'm like, if this gets us back going for 50 bucks, we saved about 600 or so on a new refrigerator, because I was going to go with a top freezer that, that was cheaper just because I'm sick of this issue, but uh, just take a note on what this looks like, because if you have this refrigerator and you have an issue where it's not cooling, chances are this printed circuit board that's in here is the issue because it controls when the defrost comes on, when that damper door opens. It, it controls the all of the functions of the uh, refrigerator and the freezer. And uh, you can do a diagnostics to throw it into like a manual defrost, and that's what I did. So um, you got to have a sheet on how to do it. It's it's really you got to hold the door switch three times, and it's a whole thing. But it will tell you. Or it will put it into defrost, and like as soon as I did that, you could start hearing like the ice cracking, and like, well, if the ice is cracking, you know that the heating element is working, and that's not the issue. So, it's obviously this board for some reason has gone bad again. So this was the instruction sheet the last time the guy was here to replace it, and they show a little uh, diagram there of the control board on the left, and then this is the instruction sheet. Now this is the part number. I'm assuming, and I couldn't find it anywhere online that doesn't line up with anything. This was the part number that uh, was given based on the model number I have. So this is what I ordered, hopefully it's right. I mean, the, the picture will look like this. But it shows you the procedure. The thing you're gonna need to have off the tag that I showed you where the manufacturer was is uh, this code. And I believe the code on mine is 21, but it could be anything. And you have to put that in this control board because if you don't, it won't work. It just won't operate the refrigerator. It has to have that code. Again, not real, real swift, but there's some directions here. I'll show you that once we get into uh, actually programming it. And here's a date of 2004. Obviously, these are older instruction sheets. Um, I, I really wonder if we got a a mana part or whirlpool or like an actual OEM part the last two times or if it wasn't like an after, uh, aftermarket part. So this here is the actual uh, sheet that came with the uh, owner's manual and this has the all the components uh, specifications and then it has control board troubleshooting. So it's always good when they give you a sheet like this with your manual saying, hey, this is how you do a force defrost. This is how you get into the uh, diagnostics of it because you're going to need this service test uh, service test mode. So it has all these different tests you can do to test the different components and stuff to make sure that they're functioning correctly. 
and it goes on to the next page on all the the different things operating like I said everything if it's getting cold it's obviously not out of refrigerant and it was uh, like I said freezing up the damper door was opening so that that leaves this control panel as the issue so they got a pretty decent schematic drawing here of everything where the uh, parts and everything are it's clearly labeled which is great but you really shouldn't need something like this on a refrigerator it you shouldn't have those type of issues okay so in the box here hopefully this is the correct part because like I said this was a uh, aftermarket not a factory part it was much much cheaper and I just went off of their little fit guide for the type of refrigerator I had so hopefully it's correct uh, I'm gonna have to set the camera down here and get this out all right so it looks like it should be correct so um, let me get it out of the, the plastic wrapper here and uh, see what we got all right so I just remembered uh, before you probably dive in and start touching this thing you want to make sure you probably don't have any static electricity built up because I'm pretty sure that'll probably short that out and and ruin it so um, I'm probably going to do this on the kitchen counter. I'll move everything. Uh, what I'll do now is um, I'll pull the old controller out of this unit here, out of the original piece, and uh, we'll do a quick comparison to make sure it looks like it's the right thing, and then uh, we'll go to the install of the new part here. All right, so taking this apart, like I said before, we got these two tabs right in here that we're looking for and uh like I said the last time this was taken out you can tell it's all pried out but now that I got the whole unit out I should be able to just push and get it to snap holy man no wonder that didn't come out there's a lot of a lot of tension on that so okay and that's gonna pull this this cover here off but get it it's gonna go quite a bit Holy smoothies. All right, uh, I'm gonna get a pry device here to get that pry open. All right, so I grabbed the biggest straight blade screwdriver I had here. I'm gonna see if I can do this without breaking these tabs off. So what I'm doing is trying to pull down as, as I'm getting this tab to open up here. stupid design oh it's really hard on the thumb doing it this way all right we should be close here what it looks like so that's the oops that's the control panel that we're looking at there that's what hopefully is what we have so I'm just quickly eyeing it up here it looks like it looks like the same thing right in here it's got to be split so this should actually be in two pieces where this big wire is here so we'll have to carefully split that but otherwise yeah, it pretty much looks the same. I'll have to see if I can find some numbers or something on it to see uh, if it is the same. But this one says Jazz Rev M, and this one says Jazz Rev M, so I'm assuming that it's the correct part. So, alright, let's uh, get set up on the counter here and get this taken care of. Okay, so to get the. Uh, control part off here. You're going to have two little electrical connectors that I believe just kind of wiggle back and forth to get off. Yep. So you're just going to kind of push down, pull. Alright, and then 
Looks like the only thing holding this in, there's going to be a clip on the bottom here and then a clip on the top. You might want to take note too of where the connectors are. Oh, they're two different sizes, so you can't goof that up. So that's good. And like I said, this has not been the first time this has been replaced. So that's what we're talking about there. And the one I have is it's like this. So it's in one piece. You have to split this here to get it to fit. So, and like I said, the problem is it's not going into defrost or it's not defrosting enough and it's causing it to freeze up and that's all this little stupid circuit board here that's causing it. So the new one comes with instructions. I know the last one did too because so I have that. So what you have to do is carefully break this where this seam is and I'll be honest I don't know how to do this. I really don't want to break this if I don't have to because it's been a while with all the fridge on the main level here. Mm -hmm. Oh, why wouldn't they just bring that already broke? It sounds like it's splitting. I think we got her. All right, so that's that one. That is the new one. This is the old one. So yeah, it pretty much, actually it looks a little different. Hmm, well hopefully it's the same. I'm just looking at the placement of some of the stuff. Yeah, it looks different. Uh oh well we'll see we'll see if this works or not but it does look like the placement of some of the stuff is different which is odd you would think it would be the same hmm all right okay so I actually had one flipped upside down when I was looking at it and that's why I was looking at like where the buttons and the numbers are I was like uh that's not right and there are little tiny pieces of plastic here the way it appears that you pull off of your LEDs here so you'll want to make sure that those are off so and I should probably take a better look at this too to see if it's there's a name brand on it or something I don't see I don't see a name brand on it anywhere And, yeah, I don't know, I don't see any any part numbers that are the same, but like I said, the placement of all of the, like the diodes, the resistors, the capacitors, the, the plugs, everything else looks the same, so I'm going to just assume that this is the correct unit. So, um, how is that in there now? Let's see. Isn't that like this? And take that, kind of pull this up. So you want that to line up. Again, you're going to want to be careful that you don't break the board. So I kind of pulled up on this this clip here a little bit as I'm putting this in. And then bottom, same type of thing here. Probably going to want to stick it in like there first. And what I would do is pull back on this tab just a little bit here. This tab's going to fit in between the plug and this resistor the way it looks. Oh, okay, so that looks like that's that. I'm just going to go with plugging it in here. Okay, so that part of it looks like it's a go. I'll just 
carefully put the wires in, you can tell there's some alignment tabs here that we need to get lined up in the uh, correct orientation. Make sure the wires don't pinch anywhere. Everything there looks good. And like I said, this was very, very tight getting this out. Wow. Yeah, and you wonder why it's so hard to get that out of there. All right, so that is that part of it. Now let's get this piece back in the refrigerator. Alright, one thing I did notice is the instruction sheets from the uh, last time it was replaced. Oh, come on here, focus in. There's the number, and here's the new one. So, looks like it's pretty much the same type of thing. So, we'll use the new instructions to get this thing put in. So like I said, when I when I took it out, I pulled this whole unit out. You probably don't have to do this. You can probably uh, just pry this part here down, this part here down and out. But like I said, it was pretty difficult. Probably just easier to pull this whole panel down. So we got one connector here that we'll have to make. Oh, I would also have the fridge turned off. Definitely don't want that on. Make sure it snaps, and then again with this, it should be just get some alignment tabs in the back there. You got to kind of push in, and then this is probably going to snap in pretty hard. And then I also took, oh yeah, I did break a little piece of some tab off there, but uh, let's see. I think this just slides on. Yep. All right. So let's uh, let's plug it in and program it, and let's see what happens. Okay. I get it plugged back in here. Let's scoot it back into position. So let's uh, let's get zoomed in here. All right. So for some reason it does sound like it's running, but uh, to get it into program mode, so we need to hold the light switch closed by pressing and then pressing the freezer temperature down three times. All right. So it says PE. So PE is going to be the program mode that we need. Um, let's see here, uh, the control will display, entry is confirmed by pressing one more time, down, okay, now everything stopped and says zero, 0, just like it should in the instructions. Um, to set the desired program code number, press the freezer and refrigerator up keys, so that's going to be the up keys here to set the number. Now if you remember, the code actually comes over, and oh, I got you zoomed in way too far here, the code is over here. And the code for this refrigerator is 21. I think I said that earlier. So we're going to program it 21. So 2, two 1 is what it should look like. 21. Uh, once the desired program code is displayed, press the freezer down key until the program code begins. Uh, press the freezer down key until the program code begins flashing indicating it's been saved. So I'm just going to press and hold. It's flashing, so that's a good sign. Um, if you jump in and the program, once the code has been saved, the program mode is exited by closing the refrigerator door. Alright, so we're just going to press this. Alright, so those are the preset temperatures I think it comes with. It's four. 
Let's crank it up a little bit. So uh, we'll give this a little bit and we'll see if it's uh, getting cold and working the way it should. All right, so it's been an hour. I put a uh, thermometer in here, so let's see what we got. All right, so 16% humidity. That's low. And it looks like it's only 50 degrees. So I'll have to wait and see if that gets colder, I guess. I would think in an hour's time this would be cooler. You know, I should put it in the freezer too and see see what that is. The freezer is definitely cold. So we'll have to see. I did actually just watched a uh, a video on uh, YouTube about appliances, and I guess the average life of a of an appliance now the manufacturer only expects five years, and that's partly due to. Uh, manufacturer defects, um, them not wanting to sell you parts to service your uh, appliances because they would rather sell you new ones. So parts are hard to find and parts are way overpriced if you can get them. And the repair guy they talked to said you can actually get parts for a machine that's 40 years old in like a day whereas like a new machine that may be a year or two old you can't get parts for. Her. So I don't know I may end up looking for like a used older refrigerator maybe going to like a commercial style like something a restaurant would have just so that you can fix it if you need to all right so here it is checking it out this is after a few hours so down to 37 degrees in the refrigerator I'm gonna call that a win now of course we don't know if it actually works because it'll take a couple days before we build any frost so I'm not really sure if it is actually fixed I'm gonna assume that it is obviously there's no ice built up in the back there yet that I can see so um, if for some reason this didn't work but I'm pretty sure that's what it was because like I said this has happened a couple times I will uh, make another video of it and we will go from there so that is your Amana slash Whirlpool slash Maytag bottom freezer repair